Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will cover all these variants that came after ReLU and we will see how they are useful for solving the dead neurons problem. Without any further delay, let's jump into the video. The problem with ReLU is with its negative input. If the input is negative, the output is zero. Because of this, some neurons become dead and they won't be useful for model learning any further. The weighted sum can become negative because of variety of reasons. There are three terms here, weights, inputs and bias. If any of these are becoming negative, then there is a chance that the total value will become negative. Now we don't have control over these parameters, do we? We can't avoid negative inputs going to ReLU. We can't control the weights, we can't control the bias. All these are randomly initialized and the parameters are learned during the training. Now how do we solve this dead neurons issue? So to solve this, there are many variants came after this. The idea is pretty simple. We should not give output as zero for negative inputs. It is as simple as that. But what should be the output in this case? What if we pass the same x in case of negative also? Yeah, I know it's bad. It's just a linear function. It is as bad as not having any activation function. Okay, then what should we do? What if we take some fraction of the input? That's what leaky relu is. It takes 10% of the input if it is in the negative range. The positive part remains same as relu. For implementation, it is quite simple. Just take the maximum of fraction of input versus input. This is similar to relu except the negative part. You can see the difference here. Instead of zero, we take some portion of the input. So we have some portion of the output even for the negative values. So we don't have dead neurons problem. Even the gradient is not zero for negative values. It has some value here. Now what is the problem with this function? Why should we use 0.1 here? Why can't we use 0.5? How do we decide this 0.1 or 0.5? So there is no theoretical base for this. These values are decided based on the experiments. The general norm is to take the values around 0.1. But there is no specific reason on why should we use this range. So the default value 0.1 might not work well for all the problems. Okay, what if we take some random value within the range of 0 and 1? Instead of using one fixed value like 0 0.1 or 0 0.5, we will take random values between 0 and 1 for different training steps. So throughout the training, we use different values between 0 and 1. And this idea led to randomized leaky relu. So here, A is not a fixed value. A is a random sample from the uniform distribution. And the range is from 0 to 1. So during each training step, it will fetch one random sample between 0 and 1. And it will use that for the activation. These 0 and 1 are commonly used. But you can use your own range. There is no restriction here. In fact, in NDSB Kaggle competition, the winners used the range of 3 and 8. This is during the training time, but what about the test time? So during the test time, we take the average of the upper limit and lower limit and we calculate the output using this formula. Now these randomized values work fine for most of the applications, but is there any better way to determine these values? The only thing remaining is to leave it to the model. So let the model choose the value by itself. So the parameter is a learned value instead of giving it as a predefined value. This is called parametric relu. Here, this is a learned parameter. This is learned during backpropagation during training. It is not predefined. So the network learns the suitable value depending on the problem domain. Now all the variants we have seen so far is similar to ReLU and there is a discontinuity at x equal to 0. So all these variations we have seen, these are not differentiable at x equal to 0 because there is a discontinuity in the function. Although it is not a problem in practice, it's better to have a function that is continuous so that it is differentiable at all points. Now I need a function which looks similar to these but it should be continuous in nature. One such function is exponential linear unit. If you see here the positive side looks similar to ReLU but the negative side uses an exponential term here to have continuity. So the curve is continuous and it is differentiable at all points even at x equal to 0. But it is a bit slower compared to the functions we have seen before because it has an exponential term but it gives higher accuracies compared to those variants. Now let's look at the scaled version of exponential linear unit which is called CELU. This looks exactly same as exponential linear unit but with two fixed parameters alpha and lambda. These two are fixed or predefined you can say. These are not learnable parameters. If both of these are equal to 1 then it is same as LU. Look at the difference in the graphs. The slope of exponential unit is 1 for all the positive values. It's just same as ReLU. But the slope of 
scaled exponentially is controlled by the parameter lambda. You can see here when you take derivative of it, it will become lambda. And the value in negative direction is controlled by alpha and lambda here. If you see here, as it reaches to minus infinity, the value is becoming minus 1 in case of ELU. Whereas in case of scaled value, the value will become minus alpha as it reaches the negative infinity. So these are the different variants of ReLU and this is the summary of all those. If you see, this is ReLU, leaky ReLU, parametric ELU and scaled ELU. So these are the formulas for this and here are the graphs for all those. So if you see here, except ReLU, all of these have some portion of output for the negative inputs. So all of these don't have dead neurons problem. So that's all from this video. In the next video, we will see some advanced activation functions which are being used in the latest state of the art models. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have shared the playlist and resources in the description below. See you in the next video.